Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe Glines, an Automator. Again, in this video, we're going to walk through and listen to why you would want to uh, throw an exception for, instead of just returning a value on an error. Um, so there's a big uh, uh, balance of which what, which one do you want, right? Should you be returning just the error and have the programmer do something with it or throw an exception and do something with it? And so Isaiah and I were working through this big project here, the, our screen clipping tool. And he's like, you know, we were going to stuff. Then, and I mean, this is where I'm let him explain kind of where we were and what we were doing, uh, but why we came up with the conclusion we did. So, take it okay. away. <laughs> hi, Joe. So, uh, hi guys. Uh, what what I'm going to show you really quickly is uh, what happened and why would you want to throw an error instead of just returning a value. Both of them are you know, valid uh, positions to take. And actually my position usually is just to return a value and you as a programmer, go ahead and handle it. If you are working with a library, right? And that's what I was working with. So I just did that. But in this particular instance, I was like, um, I, I got a little bit more convinced about it's better to throw an error, you know, like, and I'm going to just set up the stage for you to, to kind of understand what is going on and why did I arrive to that conclusion. So um, I think my screen is being shared. And as you can see here, we have this, uh, this part of the, of the tool. Uh, the main, let me go ahead and make it a little bit bigger for you. Um, the main idea here is that we have a version system here. Um, my script has well, uh, the version 1.7.2. Uh, we updated uh, the script version. We did some changes and we pushed it to where the version is gonna happen. And line 32 here uses a function that checks for an update and actually updates the script for you. There's a, there's a, a, a function that I have been developing for a little while. Uh, <laughs> it needs a lot of work, but for what we need is working now. Here, um, my function, when I developed it the first time, is using the standard error codes. This is uh, old school programming at its best. You have a bunch of error codes, and when something goes wrong, you return the error code. So what is gonna come out of your function is a number. Number one, that means there was uh, an invalid file. Uh, number two, is it was a remote file, it's uh, invalid. If there is no number, if it is zero, everything went okay. That's the main idea. Simple, works, excellent. Now, when uh, some programming languages started using objects, um, then they started to throw objects. Now, with an object, you can throw more information. Uh, of course, I could just, in AutoHotKey at least, and in other programming languages, just throw an object. I could just throw something like this. So error, so we could have code and error message equals uh, the file is invalid or something like that. So you can do that. You can return an object and that's okay. But I'm gonna show you the difference between that and um, actually using the throw command. Now, to show you that, and I know that it's gonna take a little time, but whatever, let me let me give you an example of what is going on. So um, I have a break line here. There's a break point here. When I run my script, it's gonna to try to do the update and it is going to just go ahead and stop when it reaches this line. So let's go ahead and do that. It's checking for updates. Pow. Did you see the error? I think nobody, <laughs> nobody can see an error there. Right. Now, let me tell you, there was an error there. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what the error was. Let's go ahead and stop the program. I'm gonna turn on another breakpoint that I have. This error, I have it in another uh, file, which is the, the, the function itself. So let's go ahead and run the script again. This time, it is actually going to break inside the function. Now, my error is that there is no, so what I'm saying is like, there is no new version, so return until it like, you are in the correct version, right? That's what I'm saying. But here's what happens. My local version is 1.7.2. Uh, 
my remote version is 1.17.27. So my script says like, no, you're in the current version, but it's not true. For us to catch this little error, <laughs> it was a little bit tricky because people started saying like, oh, but when are you gonna throw a new, when, when are you gonna uh, uh, give us a new version? And we said like, but we did. And everybody's like, but I haven't got anything. Uh, but we did. <laughs> so there was uh, an error in my logic when I created the, ver the, the thing, there was an error. And even though I am comparing two things right now, um, uh, the, form, the way how I'm comparing it is wrong. But my script was returning an error and I, asked, I was not catching it, right? And that's where the issue comes from. When you return a value as a programmer, you are forced to handle it. So let's go ahead and say the script.update, I have to capture the result and then say, if the result is equal to one of these errors up here, so let's go ahead and grab this. So let's say if it is number five, which is this one, if error is number five, uh, message box, uh, your, you, have the latest version or something like that. So now I have to capture each of the errors and then handle it, either throw it, show a message to the user or do something else. Let, let me let me step in here because I know we talked through this some too. And not only that, but you have to go back and look at what the five meant. And then you, someone who didn't necessarily create the other thing, get you know like say well this is this is probably what that was like whatever but yeah that, that's um, so, and that's yeah. that's where we actually went to to sq um right. and went to the documentation and i just went to error codes and showed you like um take a look at all those error codes so you're working with the library right and the library returns 520 what the heck does 520 mean? As a programmer, you have to go to their documentation. And as I don't know if you noticed, they are not organized by number. Oh, right. Yeah. Right? I did that. So yeah. the number 520 is back here, right? Now, they do have a page in which they have it organized uh, numerically, right? But man, uh, this is annoying, right? It is not easy. It is, and again, the person who created the library knows exactly what they meant. Me, that I'm gonna use the library, I don't know what the heck you were doing, right? So it is extra work. Now, the alternative to this thing, and especially this with the numbers, like get the result like this and so on, is to throw an error. So in this case, um, uh, as I mentioned before, you can throw an object, right? The other um, uh, option that you have is throw, and we're gonna throw the object instead of actually, um, uh, so that's the code and then there's a message. I'm gonna throw a message. Uh, the uh, parameter you pass is not a valid URL. Now, me, I am the one developing the library. I know exactly what I'm expecting. So I'm gonna send you a number and I'm gonna send you what I was expecting. Well, you passed a parameter to this particular uh, function that is not a valid URL because that's what I expect, okay? Now, what is the difference in this situation? Okay, so now, when I run that same script, I should, um, uh, so my error, sorry, let's go ahead and do this. Let's throw that, that same thing, but let me throw it down here, which is the one that has the issue right now. So let's go ahead and rerun it. And now I'm gonna get a message like this one, 
It is a very cryptic message. It is our own handle exception. Uh, it gives me a line there, 114, and it tells me where the error was were thrown. And it has a message in there, like the, the parameter. Yeah. So, so I could see more or less what is going on and where it is, right? Now, notice that I didn't do any change to my script. I just said script update, and this message popped up. That's the power of the exceptions. Now, here's the thing. What I should have done as a programmer is, is use the try statement, which is going to try to run that. If there are any errors, I'm going to catch the error into a variable. I could put anything here. I'm going to put E just for, for the sake of mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> making it easy, right? Um, and uh, just one second. Uh, so I'm just going to catch the error into a variable called, called E. And now I could make a more friendly error, like uh, error code. Um, it's going to be e dot code, and in a new line, I could just error message say e dot message. Now, I as a programmer have a little bit more say in how my error is going to look like. Now my message box looks a little bit better. You see, it was not this whole cryptic thing. Now. This is the good thing about errors, uh, throwing errors. It gives the programmer the ability to modify the error to look a little bit better or even handle the error. If it is an error that I could handle, I could actually say if the code, if the error code, e code equals uh, five, which is what? No, uh, the, the same version. Uh, oh. Try to do something. So, so fix the error. Yep and then continue executing normally, right? I could do that. If I don't want to handle the, the errors, I could create a message box, a, a, a well, custom message box. Or you could, even, it, you could even populate an email going to your email address. Directly, yes. With the information you need, right? Like Excellent. Yeah. I could grab the information and create a bug report automatically, right. whatever. Not only that, if I don't do any of that, Okay, if I don't do any of that, if I don't care about doing any of that, still I get an error. That's the difference between the return and the throw. Because with the return, you don't get and you don't get anything. You don't know that something failed. And that's what I was going to say earlier was you you come to me kind of switch topics slightly. You said I can either return a value or I can throw this exception, but with an object. But you could have returned the object, yes. right? But that wouldn't have the behavior of what you're showing here, right? No. Okay. So 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 yeah, that's that's the part that I could just change this. Uh, sorry, I could just uh, let me do it right below. So let me go ahead and grab this object here. Um, and 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 where I have the current version. So here, uh, right now I'm returning an object, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not handling anything. What is going to happen? Well, the the same as it was happening before. Right. There was an error, right. and I didn't even notice that there was an error. Right. So that's the difference between the return codes and the. Right. Makes throwing sense. exceptions. So basically, in my case, I'm a little bit more convinced, especially if you're dealing with libraries, it's better to throw an error. Oh, yeah, but this is going to inconvenience uh, the users in the end if you don't handle the errors. Well, it's better to have an inconvenience, but know that something is wrong than have your script running like it's running yeah. fine. It's running just fine. As far as no, you know. It's, yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. running fine. There is an error there, and you're not seeing that error. That's the difference, well, you know? And to take a step back, though, also just with dealing with the exceptions, returning an object over just the simple value allows the person creating the library much more control to be very specific. To They're the ones that really know what you know, what really the, the thing, the error is based off of, right? They're the ones that can provide better, you know, information. Context. And Ian, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's where you also, in that one example, when, when we were testing, we didn't show this, but the, if you include the error line number there, that'll be where it happened, not where it got returned and where, because it's very misleading when people do that, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So, so basically you can return which line of code generated the error. You can do that. 
And um, those are things that you cannot do with a return in the sense that you return it, but if I don't check on it, I will not see it. Mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with throwing an error, even yeah. if you don't check on it, it's gonna reach me at some point. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, it is annoying that every time you're using the program, just from the sudden stops and something like, oh my God, what is this? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, it is annoying. And it's a sign that you're not doing your job as a programmer. You have to catch the errors, mm -hmm. but it is better to have an error that was not catched, but it was displayed mm -hmm. than have but an error that I nobody think, knows is there, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in my opinion. Re that reminds me of, and I, I don't remember if it was Lexicos or Jethro, but someone year, years ago on the forum, they were talking about with IE and using COM and web scraping. And they someone was reporting you know, like they would get this com error, and someone's like, "Well, you can just disable that by putting a zero com, you know, zero. Yes, yes. And someone's like, "Hey, you, you know, that shouldn't you be your go to, want, you know, right, like that that's, shouldn't. Those are there for that. a reason. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's exactly the 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 point that I was trying to make. Like it, that error, even if you don't like it, right, it should be there. It's there for a reason. Yeah. The right now, again, this is kind of like it depends on the preference. Some people say like no, I, but in my opinion, I get a little bit more convinced that especially if I'm writing a library, yeah. I have all the information and you have none, yeah. and you're gonna use my library. Then let me send you as much information as I can, and you handle the situations yourself, right? Um, this is something uh, you remember the the library, the Chrome library that we we're using from uh, Gitu. Mm -hmm. He had this little line there that I was like, "Come on!" It was by throwing an error. Mm -hmm. um, if you put in one of the parameters, one of the parameters you were supposed uh, supposed to set the location of where you want to save or or which which uh, profile, profile you want to use, right? Yep. So you wanted to set that. And in my opinion, I say like, okay, the library, if I pass a location, should just create the folder if it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. His opinion was, if the folder is not there, notify the developer mm -hmm. that something is off and right. he should handle it. He can check and do what he wants, right? Exactly. So that's, and, and again, this that is the correct, way of thinking. If I'm making a library, I should not assume what you're going to do. I should notify you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's uh I think let's stop right here cuz and then we're going then we're going to start a second video recording cuz that's that's the other discussion I wanted to have and I think that fits in really well with that one. Um, okay, so yeah, perfect. All right. So awesome job on this.